y'all what's up welcome back to my channel we have another get ready with me video today and I am going to be playing with this deck of scarlet palette this is the one from Yvonne here on YouTube super cute girl I actually had never heard of her until deck of scarlet reached out this is a collaboration with deck of scarlet to share their new palette combos with you guys so the cool thing about deck of scarlet is that they collaborate with popular YouTubers for each palette that they put out. It's a subscription service, so you pay $29.95 and every two months you'll get a new palette. With each palette, you get everything you need for a complete look. So you're not just getting eyeshadows or just lip colors, you're getting basically everything. So with this palette, it came with these colors here. I haven't taken the plastic off because this is the first time I'm using it. Um, but it comes with these shadows here, really cute, and a highlight bronzer. I don't think this bronzer is going to work for me. I can already tell it's a bit light. Yeah, it's kind of grayish, which I probably won't use that. But this highlighter, okay, the highlighter works. I just put a little bit on my cheek, which, you know, we can see it come through. So definitely will use this highlighter. Um, and then over on this side, there are lip colors. So I actually love orange lips like coral lips super cute for spring and summer especially for like a different kind of bold lip look um so it's this orange color here and then a brown which brown is super popping these days the whole 90s vibe so yeah we're gonna be using this palette today also with this palette came two liners one of which is a uh eyeliner this is the uh chameleon i think it's like a it's a really like dark green um, which is cool and different so I'm not sure how I'm gonna implement this yet in the look but we're just gonna play and see what we come out with um, the other pencil is this lip pencil it's called cake pop and it's just like your regular brown um, liner it's pretty pigmented I'm like testing it out on my hand right here you guys can't see but well you can kind of see but uh, yeah so we're gonna be using that today um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my face I'm gonna be going in with my Caudalie Premier Elixir as usual um, I think this has definitely made a difference on my skin I've talked about this before with you guys but um, you know this is the same routine that we're doing for my everyday face which uh, I mean honestly my everyday face is just this oil and moisturizer really um, but I still put it on underneath my foundation and whatnot um, today I am gonna be doing this look I have no idea <laughs> what I'm doing yet so we're gonna just kind of see how it all comes together okay so oh let me add my moisturizer gosh I need to get another one of these I said that in the last get ready with me but like for real for real I need to get a new one. This, uh, Naked Skin One and Done. I'm not sure if I've featured this in a video yet. I think I have though. So you guys have seen this before probably. This is in medium dark. Um, I really like it because it's uh, it has good coverage for being like a complexion perfecter versus like a legit um, foundation. Yeah, and this is like super lightweight. Like it's not anything like crazy. And I only use like maybe two pumps. But that's the other thing, y'all. That's why you got to take care of your skin so that like makeup just looks better. And I feel like if you don't have breakouts in high school, you're like a freaking unicorn. <laughs> because I feel like everybody has their, you know, time where they're figuring out like, okay, I've got to figure out what is going on with my skin. And I'm having pimples. What is life right now? I feel like everybody, I'm going in with this um, Urban Decay Concealer Pencil in FBI, which I really like it. Um, I've never really used a pencil underneath my eyes before as like a highlighter, but I like it. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, so it's just like, I wish that wasn't the case, you know, I wish like girls felt comfortable like playing with makeup, right? Play with makeup, do your thing, but understand that you don't need it, you know, like, and that there's, you've got to like have some sort of like boundary, right? Like you got to know when to like give your skin a break. And I think the whole thing is that like girls freak out 
because they're like, oh my gosh, my skin looks terrible. I don't want to go out looking like this. But at the same time, I'm being counterproductive because I know that like putting on this foundation on top of my skin is just like a band-aid and it's actually not fixing the problem. And the problem may not even be just your... um just your foundation and the amount of makeup you're wearing but it may be an internal thing are you drinking enough water you know are you uh exercising enough are you, your body's just going through a lot anyway and at, at that age so you could be doing everything perfectly and you still could break out you know so all the makeup and the cream and you know foundations and concealers and all that stuff it really disrupts kind of like your natural chemistry um on your skin so and pimples are you know your body trying to get toxins out it's that's why you get bumps and stuff because trying to get that out of of your system and so it's an internal thing it's internal a lot of times also i'm also going to be doing my hair in this get ready with me um styling it i'm gonna think i'm gonna use like a wand to um curl it curl it up do a different style because when I straighten my hair all the way it feels so boring it feels so boring when I just have like straight hair like bone straight hair and um so whenever I do decide to use heat on my hair I usually just um blow it out maybe like straighten it but I always like curl it in some way like bump it with the iron or like wand it or something because um you know I don't like the just the bone straight look it's kind of boring I just did my brows with my spiked brow pencil from MAC um I always use this and that is nothing new um I'm going to clean my brows up even though my brows are pretty much they're good like I don't need to have anything like you know super intense done to them because they're just super thick and whatever um but i'm still gonna just highlight underneath my brow bone okay so i wanted to talk to y'all about this idea that kind of was floating around in my brain yesterday and um i was really thinking about it because i think that it's something that like you know is important to to think about when you are an entrepreneur or you know specifically trying to be a professional blogger or youtuber or whatever and i'm not talking about like you know people who like live and breathe on youtube and they make their money from views straight up i'm talking about people like me who a bulk of my income comes from brand work and working with brands and doing sponsored content and whatever like that like this video is a sponsored video um but you know how do you get those opportunities and i've been getting a lot of emails about that lately like how did you become a brand ambassador and then i'm thinking i didn't plan to be a brand ambassador like that wasn't a plan to just hop around from different brands of being an ambassador it was more so i wanted to work with a brand i wanted to be involved and i not, I don't I guess I don't I didn't necessarily see that as being a brand ambassador so to speak but that's kind of like the role that you know I ended up playing in a lot of different situations and um but technically I've only been a brand ambassador like a legit one like brand ambassador title like twice and I've worked with like probably over 20 brands because I don't like one I don't like the exclusivity of being a brand ambassador for a specific like brand like i like the openness i like being able to talk and work with different brands and try new things and all that so i would never like count myself out to just one specific brand like that because i think that there's the freedom that i have is that i can choose to work with whoever i want to work with and because of the image that i portray and because of my platform that i've built and so I was thinking about the idea of mimicking versus likeness. So I say that to mean the difference between mimicking something and copying something versus having something that's in the same likeness as something, right? So a lot of times people will, again, ask me, how do you do this? How do you do that? And and I'll just tell them, I'm like, you know what? In every different 
scenario in my life whenever it came to you know my personal stuff like hobbies or school work or um, you know when I was in my master's program when I was working at a university and all that it was always kind of like this idea that I always wanted to be in the same likeness as where I wanted to be so before it would be like oh um, you know I wanted to be a VP of student affairs like that was my end career goal for a long time and I I'm using um, Becca Aqualuminous Concealer for this contour. It is in Dark Golden. That's what I wanted to do as a career. And so, with that being said, I knew, alright, I need to set myself up to look, act, and be perceived as somebody who deserves and looks like they should be in that role. So, I would spend a lot of time, you know, getting to know, um people that I went to school with so like obviously there's only there's only one VP of student affairs in a college campus um and it's a long story of what a VP of student affairs is if you don't know what it is then it's kind of a long story but if you do cool anyway it's just a high high up ranked person in a college university setting right so there's only really like one at a time so at the different schools that I would work at or I went to I would always make a point to get to know that person on campus and mind you that person on campus is hard to reach a lot of times you know like it's only one of them so they're doing a lot of different things on campus they're having meetings and doing you know different things or whatever and um and so it was always hard to like get some of their time but I always made it a point to say hey like reach out, try to get to know them, um, see what they're doing, see how they got to that point and do that or something similar. So kind of bringing it back to what I do now, it's like when I first started really taking, you know, this seriously, I told myself, I said, okay, Jade, if this is what you want to do and you want to really like make this something, picture yourself as if you're already at the level that you want to be at, right? So when I didn't have money I was broke and was you know filming and living in a small little room studio um, in grad school working like negative two hundred dollars in my account actually more than that because I had crazy credit card bills um, I was creating content that I was trying to reflect a level of expertise and a level of professionalism that I wanted brands to be able to connect with. So every time that I post something or I do something online, it's always at a higher level because that's where I wanted to be as a professional. Um, and I knew that, you know, even before I decided to do lipstick and curls full time, I was like, I want to be able, like, wouldn't that be cool if I could do this full time? Like, wouldn't that be cool if I could just do lipstick and curls? Like, it was like a far-fetched dream. Um, and so, actually, I'm, I'm going to start on my eyes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm ranting at this point, just talking. But I'm going to start on my eyes. I'm going to use this, um, this mermaid green because it's just gorgeous. Um, I'm going to put that on my lid. Let me put a base on. The base that I'm using is this Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector, but I'm using it as a base on my lid because it's light. And I know that my shadow will stick to it. But yeah, so I I knew that I, I was like, wow, like if I could do that, I would do it. So I think subconsciously I was always working towards this because... I was like very particular about everything that I did, how it looked, and I knew that like I was creating content that a brand could say, you know what, we don't have to do nothing, we can just put our name on it and it represents us well. And that's that was the goal, that everything that I put out, a brand could see it and say, wow, that's like really well produced, really well thought out, and there's a message and it connects and people feel something from it, and that is how... I kind of made up my mind on how to create content and um, and so I started that mindset because I said I want to be in a position where brands want to work with me they look for me they know what I bring to the table and I had to you know have the same likeness as what they were doing because 
you know, that would be an easy transition because a brand's image is everything, you know? And so with that being said, your image has to be in the same likeness as whoever or whatever brand you want to work with. Um, and so on the other side, though, is that, you know, mimicking. Okay, so I see a lot of mimicking happening on YouTube, copying and kind of, um, you know, when it comes to creative content, it, it's, it's easy to be inspired by what you see. So if you are, you know, on YouTube a lot, oh, this is so pretty. Oh my gosh. If you're on YouTube a lot and you um, watch a lot of YouTubers, you have favorite YouTubers and stuff. And then you decide, you know what, I could do that. I could, I could do makeup tutorials or hair tutorials or whatever. Um, I could do that. And then you start doing it. But something interesting starts happening. Your content starts looking like your favorite YouTuber's content. And then you start realizing that, wow, like a lot of my stuff looks like everything else that I see out there. And that's what happens when you mimic where you want to be instead of being in the likeness of where you want to be, okay? So, yes, there's only so many, like, makeup looks and, you know, hair tutorials and twist-out videos you can do, but there's always a way to put your own spin on it. Always. Always. That's your power. There's always a way for you to just put your own spin on it. And it's so easy to get caught up in, like, in between, like, doing something and just being inspired and putting your own twist on it versus mimicking and copying somebody. It's a very, very thin line. So my goal is to always be in the likeness of where I want to be and using it as inspiration in an indirect way versus directly saying, I love her look, I'm recreating her look, this is my recreation, and I'm calling it my own look, if that makes sense. So, and I think that's, you know, something that if you are trying to be a YouTuber or a blogger is something that, you know, it, it happens all the time. And sometimes it's not called out and sometimes it is. And it can become a big kind of cluster because, you know, people feel a type of way about copying, which, is, you know, is true. You should feel a way about copying, but, you know a way to get away from that is to kind of give yourself a, a mental measure to check, you know, am I mimicking something? Am I copying it? It does it look too similar? Or am I just doing the, you know, something in the likeness of something else that I've been inspired by? And so, and one thing that I do is I don't watch a lot of YouTube, you know, I'm here, I upload, I create my content and that's it because I think that, um, having a safe and, you know, safe balance between wow this is so freaking pretty <laughs> like i can't even this is so pretty um being able to have a balance between um you know being inspired versus you know, copying something i think is super super crucial Ooh, i really love this eye look like i'm gonna take some of this fudge this uh sorry for the glare y'all the fudge um, brown color and I'm just gonna put a little bit like in the corner to like make some depth depth happen here and then I'm gonna take a little bit and I'm gonna put it underneath too George. Yes. Okay. I love it. I love it. This is like a perfect palette for me because I would not have chose these colors. <laughs> I would not have chose these colors. I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't have. I've been in such a nude and like pink mauve like vibe lately that I would not have like chosen, you know, a green and an orange, but I used to love greens and oranges and colors um i just i don't know it's been weird i've been in a really weird like muted phase which i think it's just like trendy right now to be in like very neutral colors and stuff so it's kind of nice that you know this palette came with these colors because it gave me the opportunity to try something out that you know i would not have chosen for myself but 
Um, but I've gotten the opportunity to try because I got this little, you know, palette situation. And, um, let me get my other brush. And, um, I think I put a little bit too much on this side. But, so that's the cool thing. And, um, also with this palette, you can cancel it at any time. So you can, um, you can, you know, get a couple... And then decide, hey, I really don't, like, need them. I'd rather, you know, pick out my individual stuff. You can do that. I think it's really cool that, you know, it's all from, like, YouTubers, beauty YouTubers. And you can collect them. So, like, being on subscription allows you to collect all these limited palettes from your favorites. And be able to have them as a keepsake. You know? And I think that's cool. I guess this is becoming, like, a smoky a smoky look somehow <laughs> I don't know how this happened but we're here <laughs> like I said um I don't I didn't know what I was gonna do with this with these colors um but I like the way that it's kind of coming out and it's really pretty up against my brown eyes I like to do that too I think about that stuff I think about like you know, what's going to look good against my skin color? What's going to look good against my eye color? And greens and purples are really good for if you have brown eyes. It just brings them out. Um, so that's why, like, back in the day when I used to wear, like, colored eyeshadow and whatnot, I would always reach for, like, purple, like, shimmery shades or, like, gold or green because, um, yeah, because they look good on brown eyes. So I'm actually going to take this Halo highlighter and I'm gonna get some and I'm gonna put it in between my eyes my tear duct here just to brighten that area up a little bit now I would definitely wear this at night time because this is like you can make this like Honestly, I could smoke this out even more, but I'm it's not nighttime. <laughs> so, I'm going to leave it pretty much like this. I love this. I love this. I'm skipping um I'm going to ooh. Y'all, I haven't even set my face. I'm, I'm kind of like anti-baking lately. Um I don't know why. I just I just I don't know. I just haven't been like baking like crazy lately, you know, per, you know, like everybody does usually but I have been loving this Becca um, blurring powder it's like a setting powder um, so I'm gonna do a little bit just under my eyes because really that's the only place that I crease but this blurring powder is bomb and it doesn't have flashback or anything either so it's really really nice I'm put a little bit on my nose Really just the areas where I highlighted. You know what? I'm not adding lashes. It's only because I want to keep this more daytime. But if I wanted a more dramatic look, I would definitely add lashes to this. I just don't want to. Um, I've been anti-eyelash lately. I've been anti-everything. Anti-makeup. I don't know what is wrong with me. Uh, but I love this mascara. It is the So Lash. You guys know this is basically all I use right now when it comes to mascaras um so that's just the vibe I've been on lately and luckily I still have pretty full and long lashes so it's not terrible that I am not you know wearing lashes bam super pretty what this is so pretty oh my gosh I'm tripping y'all because I really like did not think that I was gonna like this and I kind of was unsure of where I was gonna go with it um but I love this look like it is so pretty and I'm just like really surprised honestly so another good way to uh try new things is to be a part of a subscription program which I'm usually not a subscription type person because I like to pick out what I want, especially when it comes to makeup and whatnot. But this is like really, this is really pretty. So I'm just dusting off all the rest of the powder and whatnot. I'm going to um, set my brows. So I'm going to take some clear Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel, which 
this is honestly the best brow gel because it holds your brow hairs like like real gel like they don't move bronzer going in with the same bronzer i always use which is this um laura mercier baked powder or baked bronzer in bronze four i'm just gonna do this everywhere that i need some bronziness i cannot wait until it gets warmer out y'all because i cannot wait to get super tanned again and i'm so excited because i'm going to jamaica going to jamaica with a few friends in april so that will be fun now i just need to contour my nose a little bit even though i really don't need much but i do a little bit of contour just a little oh let me go ahead and highlight i'm going to take again the halo from this palette and use that on my cheeks it's really pretty <laughs> I like that this is not like super intense so I can like build it up without like doing too much because sometimes I pick up too much and I'm like oh it's a little bit too much highlight I'm not trying to look like you know I'm reflecting on all sides I just want to look you know like my skin is glowing right we are done highlighting and contouring and whatnot <laughs> This is very much so a nude lip liner for me, uh, which I like to, if I do lip liner, I like to go a little bit, like a couple shades darker than this. And the pencil has good pigment. It's just really close to my skin color, which is cool. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to just apply this lipstick, this MAC lipstick in Cream de Nude. It's a cream sheen, so it's going to have a little bit of uh, moisture to it which is what I want with this eye look. All right, so our makeup is done. I really like this, this is pretty. And since I did a lot with the color on top, I couldn't, I couldn't do a color on my lips just because I have to have balance. <laughs> so I did, you know, a really nude look for this look and um, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Okay, so now on to hair. I hope you guys enjoyed this get ready with me video and let me know if you guys want to see more or you have specific products that you guys want me to try out next time and until then I will talk to you guys later bye